I think we should get all the plastic off of this. Do a little bit of an unveiling. Yes, indeed. This really is the week we finish the restoration work on the main part of the cab. Months of work, battling the cold, the dark and the damp, without mains electricity and on a budget barely big enough to keep Tim in tea bags, we've done it. And in this week's video, we'll be unveiling her in all her shiny brown gloriousness. So join us in the workshop at the barn on a farm for the great unwrapping as we pass the first big milestone of the restoration and reinvention of this vintage 1975 Bedford fire truck. We are Lisa and Tim of Old Rope Salvage, and this is the story of us attempting to build the world's greatest motorhome on the world's smallest budget. Hello and welcome back to the Old Rope Salvage workshop. So we're in here this week, it's Monday morning at the end of October, and this week is the week that we are going to be finishing the cab once and for all. So stay tuned to see it in all its marvellous brown glory. It's going to be amazing. How, how do you work this out then? Because you're introduced in the beginning of the video with saying we're finishing off the paint. But what about all the engine bay and underneath the truck? I'll show you what he's been doing. And then by the time we come back here, Maybe he'll be ready to uh, show you yeah, the next Because otherwise it's like I, spent, I wasted a week of my time painting the underneath. All right, I'll put that on now. Yeah. <laughs> we first spent what felt like days masking off the interior of the cab so the overspray from the exterior wouldn't get in and ruin all of Tim's previous hard work. It was slow going but it's really important not to rush this step. Paint is not very forgiving, so we needed to be meticulous as dust from overspray looks terrible and will ruin an otherwise decent paint job. Plus, when we come to sticking down the soundproofing inside the cab, it will attach easier if the surface it needs to stick to is good and shiny. So by spending this time now, we hope we will be spared a whole world of woe later. But there is a fatal flaw in the plan. Have you guessed what it is yet? Oh, that's uh, all of the doors and windows masked up, got plastic on them. So that's hopefully will cut down on the overspray and dry paint going into the inside of the cab. I haven't got lots of newspaper, so um, hence I'm mine using a load of plastic. Do I see you, Lisa? Do you want to come and have a look? Okay. What? What are you doing in there? Why are you going to get out now? It's like one step forward and two step back. <laughs> Jeez. Come on, get out. Jeez. <laughs> Did you finish the holes in the inside though? Oh good, at least that's one thing. <laughs> right, hopefully next time we look in here, it's going to be equally shiny and clean.
Right, it's October the 20th and uh, it looked like it was all right earlier. I managed to get the paint on when it wasn't too bad, but it's just gone horrible out here. There's a river running down. You try and pick a good good time for everything and, uh, and it just goes crazy. But I have to say, um, I'm sure it's too dark in here to really see any of this. And the, uh, oh, it's making it go a funny yellowy color. It's not really that yellow. Managed to spray on all of the engine bay and all the top there. Underneath here, it really does look really yellowy green. This is brown, it's not that color really. But uh, I have to say, the, the finish on it is just, it's beautiful. I'm really happy with the shine that's come out of it. it means no more works needs to be done to it. And it's a really difficult bit to paint as well because of all the bits of angle. So what I did, ended up doing is um, my first coat I went over, I went over the little gun to start off with and um, sort of went in the areas which I thought would be really difficult to get to. Uh, so the first coat I did with the um, the big gun, I just spent trying to get in all the bits, you know, so that I was going right into the little gaps down in there and behind brackets and all the little fiddly bits with the with the first coat, running it a little bit, um, not too much paint through all the time, just so that um, I didn't get like massive runs or anything like that. And I c tried to coat everything. And then on the second coat, I just kind of went over it all um, much quicker, kind of looking at the flat surfaces and the paint went into wherever it was going to go in and uh, allowed me to put on as much paint as I need to kind of get a good coating over it all um, and without flooding it too much with paint because I didn't really want to end up with like, it wouldn't really matter but tons of runs or anything. And um, the paint has gone on so lovely. There's, I, I think I got one, one little run under the wheel arch, which you can't even see now because it's actually run out, well, just down there somewhere. It's so shiny. And I'm just hoping now, because the weather has gone so bad, it's just gonna like hold its shine and dry like that. Because if it dries like that, I'm gonna be so happy. Some of the areas I painted earlier on are actually touch dry now. I just hope it keeps its shine. Because yeah, it looks fantastic. So, um, I was gonna spray under the front as well, because there's a few bits that cross over between the two. But um, I didn't start spraying this till probably about four o'clock, which was too late anyway. And, and it's gone so dark. So I, I would have had to have tipped the cab up back up the other way to get onto the front and and it's pretty knackering this is it's quite physical kneeling down bending around and it's it is pretty what you think is going to just take you like 10 minutes to spray it it's like yeah two hours later and you're knackered so hopefully if the weather's any good I'll be able to turn it around tip it up to the fronts in the air or all the way up and I'll probably have quite a bit of masking to do so I don't get like tons and tons of overspray over the stuff that I've already got really nice. And then that will leave just the top, which I'm really looking forward to. This is the bit we're going to do last. We're going to mask out all the bits that have been painted like we already have with the inside. And uh, so it's just all the way around the windows, around the, the door frames and the nose, the front of it. So that's going to be the last bit we do on the cab. Can't wait to start on the doors and everything then. But that's a whole load more work, isn't it? Sandblasting and primering. So yeah, getting this fully in paint is a, is a really huge milestone for us. And like I say, with this, I'm really happy. The colour look, I think, is great. It's beautiful. And so shiny and um, honestly it's not that yellow <laughs> yellowy green in real life it's it's far redder I'm a little bit knackered so see you later bye
yeah I'm pretty pleased with this that leaves just one more bit to do really and it's all the bits that you can see it's the front nose all the bits around the windows around the back so it's all the kind of really visible area and the weather has gone terrible um, <laughs> I'm gonna get on with this thing but like straight away tomorrow hopefully I can put this back down again without I don't know scuffing the paint up too much but uh straight into sanding the rest of this down it had been done a bit earlier and I regret actually sort of sanding it now I should have just left it but it is what it is so I just go over what I've already done with some 600 and finish it all off it's brown So Tim is just behind me now doing last bits of sand in, ready to put on the rest of the top coat. He's done the roof, he's done all the inside, he's done all the underneath, he's done the engine bay. All that's left is a little bit round the door frames, the front panel and the back panel. This is it, the day seems to have arrived just about. It's four o'clock, which means that in about an hour it's going to be really dark. If you're going to go in there, make sure you've got no fluff on you. <sighs> so for anyone who's interested in um, how much paint we've used, we probably know one, I think <laughs> by the time we've done the cab, that's not including the doors or any other pieces, I think we've used two and a half litres of uh, this paint, half the can. Obviously there's going to be a bit more on the doors and we were hoping there'd be some to do the chassis. Which I think we could be alright. I bet you're really going to miss this, aren't you, watching us mix paint? I know, I know you love it. Tim gets all this nervous energy around him when uh, he's gearing up to do the, the paint, particularly the top coat. I'm always like that. <laughs> So we've got three coats that we're going to do for this final bit. It's about quarter to four. Hmm. We've got probably to about five o'clock with the light. We've got three coats to do. We need to wait ten minutes between each coat. So you've got about three and a half minutes to do each coat. <laughs> can you do that? You do a coat. By the time we can start the second coat, Ten minutes after. So if it takes me ten minutes to go around the truck, I can continue going okay. without stopping. Okay. But if I get around in seven minutes, I have to wait three minutes to start again. Okay. So if from when we start doing it, as long as it doesn't take me more than ten minutes to do a coat, it will be done in half an hour from now. All right. All right. We have an intention that this isn't going to be the end point for the paint job. Obviously, we've got all the wings and the panels to do and everything as well, and they are going to be in a third colour. And then we're going to be doing sign writing um, and we have some really, really nice ideas um, that we're brewing um, about all of that. I've got to go and generator on now. Sorry folks, I've got to keep moving. He does. <laughs> I've got to get painting now. I'm like the Cadbury's caramel bunny me. I'm like, take it easy. And he just runs around me like he's in a different, different sort of time zone. It's like having a fly buzzing around your head. To keep feeding in cups of tea. So, one final time we did go into our makeshift paint booth with the cab. After all this time, and with winter closing in around us more and more each day, it was with some relief that we found ourselves at this milestone. Without mains electricity to aid us, it had felt like a bit of a struggle to get to this point, but the results have for us been worth it, and will hopefully give us the incentive we now need to see the remainder of the restoration of this old Bedford through to the end. As soon as this is done, the kettle goes on.
Right, what is it? Quarter to five, just as it starts getting dark again now, and we've finished up. We've, um, on this last bit, because there's potential that some of it might have to get sanded should the finish not be very good. I mean, we're talking like really fine sanding and then polishing. It's had three coats on all of this bit. So most of the rest of it's only had two. There were places where I put an extra coat like on the dashboard top and around the frame. So yeah, three full coats we just did. Yeah, like I say, it's quarter to five now. I mixed up half a litre of paint with the quarter litre of hardeners and I've got a little bit left. Always better to have a little tiny bit left than be a little bit too short, so that's good. And generally, overall, it's like, oh, it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm complaining a little bit because there's some little bits of fluff in places on the front. It's good, it's, it looks fantastic though, I think. And uh, hopefully we will, tomorrow at least, we'll get all the stuff stripped off. So we'll leave it overnight now and we'll come back tomorrow and hopefully be able to take all the masking off tomorrow, though I think it's like 24 hours, isn't it? For it to oh, be perfectly no, we will dry. be all right for the masking to come off tomorrow. But I'm so desperate now to yeah. have a proper look at it. From the old rusty, slightly rusty, almost wreck that it was when we um, started work on it, all the holes, all the rust, all the dents and everything, I just can't believe yeah. that it could have been restored to such beauty and I can't wait at this point now to get um, stuck into all the panels and everything else and start just putting this thing all together and I think you know by the end of this winter early next spring I think it's going to be oh god it's going to be beautiful well, so imagine that the chassis they're all glossy <laughs> brown yeah Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I've got to spend the next hour cleaning out the spray gun. Oh yeah. We'll see you tomorrow for the great unwrapping. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to lick my stick? I think we should get all the plastic off of this. Do a little bit of an unveiling. Get it unwrapped. And it's the end of the work on the main part of the cab. The cab is now fully restored. <laughs> we finished. Let's oh go my home. god. <laughs> so we're really, really happy um, with how it's turned out. I mean, we think, we think <laughs> it looks absolutely glorious. We love the colour. Um, couldn't be happier, I think it was the right choice to make, so no sort of, yeah, regrets with that at all. What do you think? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it's great, um, really nice, I love it, yeah. Good, so that is it, and we've come into the workshop this morning um, to take a few photos from the last of the video. We're now just having a bit of a tidy up in the workshop and having a slight rearranging things ready for the next stage of um, work, which is going to be some new stuff coming up. Uh, we really like the tent here, it's been really useful, so we're going to try and make space just outside the tent so that we can put the cab out, cover it over and keep this here because it's a really good like working area it's like for like making dirt and you know like dust and things so um, we probably will be moving on to a few things to do with the truck like uh, maybe do some soundproofing working out our headlining and um, probably work on some of the bigger parts sandblast them and prime them so the wings and the 
headlight panels and all those and the doors they still need some work doing to them so probably catch up with some of the big parts oh yeah i think i'm looking forward to doing more sandblasting okay, i'm right? really excited about getting back to doing more sandblasting i'm really it. really looking forward to starting work on all the panels and everything because having observed tim doing all the um primary and um the painting i really want to get my hands in now having to go i'm really looking forward well you to can do that. them all yeah, I can't really So I'll be booking a holiday <laughs> and uh, you'll be getting on with uh, doing all the other panels. We've got some really, really, we've got a really, really cool idea that we're developing for the headlining um, of the, the truck here, which we'll be sharing with you hopefully in the coming weeks. Which we should um, have made before we painted the truck. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that is... That is it. So we will be back in a couple of weeks, um, but probably with just a little bit of a special video. So watch out for that. And then we'll be back a couple of weeks after that with all the new stuff that we're going to be working on that we've just mentioned. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. As always, thanks for all your support. As always, um, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, maybe consider subscribing. And uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, all that stuff, and we will be seeing you here again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. See you later. Take care.